This is without doubt one of the most productive veggie patches that I've ever seen. Just take a look at it. It's absolutely jam-packed with all sorts of winter crops. There's kale, silver beet, beetroot, potatoes, garlic, cabbage, it just goes on. Now, we're in Perth, sitting on top of a sand dune, the worst of sandy soil. Clearly, this garden knows what she's doing. I have to admit, I actually cried. I bought it sight unseen from Fitzroy Crossing, but uh, I recovered and I'm a great stayer. So I hung in there and with the help of my partner, we have transformed the place. Sue Hartley has passion and determination. She's transformed the full suburban block into a productive garden with fruit trees, raised veggie beds, a chook run, and the verge produces all sorts of vegetables in what is now humus rich soil. Hey Josh, come here, have a look at this. This is what I've been trying to grow here. This is fungi hyphae, and they do all the work. They exchange the uh, goodness in the soil with the root hairs of the plants. How many years work has gone into this? Well, this garden bed's been here probably four years. There's been no chemicals on here, just seaweed and biodynamic treatments. The garden has been designed as a working system with careful consideration of how different elements like plants, animals and structures work together. I don't see plants in isolation. Um, I have them there for, for multiple reasons. Um, for beauty, for shade, for the food that they produce and I also believe that if you are growing almost a monocultural garden as you see some are, uh, they're much more prone to insect and disease attack. Well, there's a couple of interesting things here, Sue. Tell us about the lime wash on the stem. I had to put those on because these were transplanted from my previous garden and they were vulnerable to burning the bark. So that's a, a wash there to help reflect the heat. Now, it's still looking a bit hungry. It looks like an iron deficiency. Exactly. There's a lot of problems here with this soil. I have had to add iron chelate and sulphur. And I've also done a trench around here and I've put in uh, that chittering loam and I've mixed it with pig manure and um, compost. And hopefully the little feeder roots, which are quite shallow, will grow into that. And this spring we'll see a big change in those leaves. We'll get a new flush of healthy leaves. So this is really like a small... It's a little orchard. orchard. Yep. Little trees, okay. Yeah, guava, native lime, pomegranate. citrus, pomegranate. Lovely. I think once you get a bit of an a, a overstory, a lot of things can survive these horrible summers yes. we have here. So I see you use green manures too to build up the soil? I do. I've used, this has been green manured at least three times. So we've had a variety of things in it. Um, legumes and mustards to help clear out any nematodes. And also just add a whole lot of um, nutrition into the soil. I'm going to make a, uh, a worms castings mix here. Right. I use my own worm castings and worm liquid in the soil. So a couple of worms there that haven't got left, so we better leave them behind. This will go in here into the water, which is, if it's tap water, leave it for at least 24 hours to get out the chlorine. To off-gas that? Yes, mm -hmm. because that would kill anything active in there. Now we're going to make a vortex here, so we're going to stir the water one way so we've got a nice kind of vortex happening and then we turn it around and we go back the other way. So you sit there for an hour doing this, making a lovely vortex and then collapsing it and bringing it back the other way and this is charging the uh, water molecules in here. Goes on easy enough doesn't it? And a little bit goes a long way. It's it about does. inoculating isn't it? It is about inoculating, you're not doing a whole great big meal of the stuff, it's just to put a bit of these uh, lovely microbes around and, and get uh, stuff tell working. Us, how often would you do this? Well, it depends on what your needs are. If you're um, trying to treat or prevent uh, powdery mildew, it'd be once a week. But if it's a, a, a plant feed, probably once every two weeks, maybe less. How important is gardening as part of your lifestyle? I grew up in an area full of Italians and Slavs and everyone gardened and they gardened in their front yard, which, you know, horrified, I think, some of the Anglos. For me it's therapy, you know, it's just a pleasure because I love to see plants grow and I like to experiment and I like to try different things. 